Item Number SCP-510 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures Instances of SCP-510 are to be treated as a Level 1 infective substance, and are not to be handled by anyone not in contained atmosphere hazmat CAHM suits. Any staff interacting with SCP-510 must be monitored for one month after interaction. Infestation by SCP-510 will be met with immediate quarantine and sterilization of the surrounding area. Containment units must have airtight seals on any and all possible access points. Staff access is to be provided by a dual airlock, with chemical showers at each stage. Robotic surrogates are to be used whenever possible for SCP-510 interaction, and all materials interacting with SCP-510 are to be sterilized and quarantined for one month of their interaction. Seals are to be checked and repaired weekly. Any staff observed expressing elevated levels of fatigue, sleepiness, or exhaustion are to be quarantined and tested for infestation. In the event of multi-subject infestation, site-wide lockdown will be initiated. SCP-510 has thus far proven difficult to fully identify. It is possibly a form of microorganism, or a form of nanite. The particles of SCP-510 appear to be surrounded by a field that causes a blurring effect even in high magnification. Tests have come back with wildly varied results, and samples have simultaneously exhibited properties of organic and non-organic matter, as well as properties of solids, liquids, and gases. Current research views it as a form of mold or virus due to its response to high heat and chemical sterilization. SCP-510 infests soft surfaces such as fabric, feathers, hair, or foam, with the ability to remain dormant in such substances for years. If SCP-510 encounters delta waves, typically emitted by humans entering sleep, SCP-510 will activate and begin to infest any nearby organic life. Infestation follows a set progression. See Addendum 84b, Symptoms and Progression, most often ending with the death of infested subjects after four to six days. SCP-510 appears to prefer mammalian life for infestation, primarily human beings. Attempts to artificially infest other life forms have met with very limited success. Possible applications of SCP-510 and its life support function are being researched. High heat and highly acidic chemicals have been able to dissolve SCP-510 particles. Dissolved particles leave behind no detectable residue. Addendum Document 84b Symptoms and Progression Stage 1 Infestation Symptoms Exhaustion Fatigue Sleepiness General listlessness Itchy eyes General head pain Description SCP-510 begins to form sting-like extrusions, which anchor into the skin. Extrusions continue to grow into the skin, contacting all major organs and systems in 8-24 to hours. Subjects will grow progressively more tired during this time, and will seek out quiet, dark areas in which to sleep. Stage 2 Initial Manifestation Symptoms Deep Coma Pillow formation by SCP-510 on the body Progressive invasion of biological systems, nervous, cardiovascular, respiratory, etc. SCP-510 forms large, pillow-like growths on the body. These growths are warm and emit a soft light, with a texture described as microfiber plush. Subjects slip into a deep coma, becoming totally unresponsive to any and all outside stimuli. SCP-510 will start to take over biological systems, causing blood, neural activity, and even oxygen to pass through the growth before being returned to the subject. It has been observed that subjects in this stage enter a dream state more vivid than standard REM sleep. Stage 3 Full Manifestation Symptoms Total dependence on SCP-510 for all biological functions Bonding of the skin with SCP-510 Slow reduction of mental activity. Description: SCP-510 takes full control of all biological functions for the host organism. 
Damage to the gross at this point will result in the immediate death of the host, as the gross are now performing all biological functions for the body. A form of accelerated atrophy sets in, with muscular and skeletal structures beginning to weaken and shrink, and total shutdown of most organs. Subjects are observed to lose 44% of their body mass during this stage. SCP-510 will directly bond to the skin, replacing the thin threads with larger protrusions of the growths. The brain begins to slow down and does not register any pain or awareness of these changes, showing high stimulation in areas with contentment and comfort. Stage 4 Conversion Symptoms Rapid growth of SCP-510 Major reduction in host physical mass Absorption of major organs and tissues by SCP-510 Host brains enter the deep dream state Description: SCP-510 begins to compromise the basic structure of the body, absorbing organs, skin, bones, and muscles. Subject's mass will be reduced to one-tenth of initial size, with only a few tissues and the brain remaining. The brain enters a state labeled Deep Dreaming, in which brain activity is reduced to a point that a subject may be declared legally dead. However, brain activity continues, with evidence of some sense of surroundings being recorded. This is remarkable, considering most hosts of this stage are a brain, spinal cord, and a few clumps of tissue encased in SCP-510 growths. Activity at this stage seems to be initially located in comfort and contentment centers with activity shifting into fear and alarm centers as conversion continues. SCP-510 begins to break down to individual particles on the surface of the growths. Stage 5 Resolution and Sporing Symptoms Absorption of remaining tissues Breakdown of SCP-510 into individual particles Description: SCP-510 absorbs the remaining tissues, including the brain, over a period of 12 to 14 hours. Brain scans show highly elevated levels of activity, consistent with extreme fear or pain at this point, which slowly shifts back into a more relaxed state as the brain is absorbed. After full absorption, SCP-510 will break down into individual particles, with the full breakdown of the growth after three hours. Particles will then float in the air until making contact with the receptive surface. Thank you.